Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech doing a strategy video with 10 tips on how to play fetch lands. Now, we're all super excited that the fetch lands are coming back in Cons of Tokyo. We're all super excited that the Fetchlands are coming back this weekend at the pre-release in Cons of Tarkir. We're getting the 5 from Onslaught. Hopefully we'll see the 5 from Zendikar come soon. If you have any suggestions on other strategy tips besides what I put in this video, please leave them in the comments. I'm collecting more tips to do another video on this in a week or two. The first big one that I've got here is Landfall. Go back and read all of the cards with Landfall. Fetchlands are amazing for Landfall. Searing Blaze is one of my absolute favorite cards right now in the modern environment. 8 out of 10 times I'm happy to have Searing Blaze in my hand over Lightning Bolt. It is often 3 damage to the opponent's creature. It lets my Goblin Guide or my Snapcaster Mage get through and 3 damage to their face. Make sure to hold back one of your fetch lands so that you're able to activate landfall on your opponent's turn if you need it. I definitely see people rush to use their fetch lands and not leave them out. It really comes as a shock to somebody to see that landfall trigger on your opponent's turn, especially out of an instant. They might expect it out of a step links, but they almost never see it coming from something like Searing Blaze. In the number 9 spot here, I've got Blood Moon. I play against Blood Moon a pretty good amount in Legacy, especially when I go to smaller tournaments. It is one of the most popular hate cards out there. It's very important to figure out what you're playing against, and don't crack your fetch lands too soon for duels or shocks. You can often wait until the Blood Moon is on the stack, and then crack them to get the basics that you need to survive a Blood Moon. Blood Moon gets significantly worse in the modern environment with the addition of the Onslaught fetches, because you are now able to get the exact mana that you need out of your basics, but that doesn't mean Blood Moon will go away. Lots of people will continue to play Blood Moon because it's often a free win. I have definitely won with Blood Moon because people cracked their fetches too early and didn't see it coming. The number eight spot here, I've got the interaction between the temples and the fetch lands. This is going to be super relevant in standard and somewhat relevant in modern. Use your temples right away to get rid of the cards that you don't want in your early game and then save a fetch land to be able to shuffle those back up to the top for the late game. Very, very important to play the timing on these right. Your scry lands are almost always going to be better first, and your fetch lands are going to be better late game to get those cards back into play. Number seven spot here, I've got a deck that I really hate playing against. It's Miracles. It's one of the strongest decks out there in Legacy. Sensei's Divining Top, when combined with a fetch land, gives you incredible control. You can also do this in EDH, but it allows you to manipulate when you get Miracles, and it often lets you see six different cards in a turn when you're looking for an answer. Any type of card selection on top of your deck, Scry is one of those, and Top is another, works so well with Fetchlands. In the number eight spot here, this should be common sense, but I've screwed this up. I screwed this up the first time I played Rug Delver in a competitive tournament. Count the number of lands that you've got, and don't fetch if you don't have any lands left. I had two people fetch for no land against me at GP Portland in the side events in Modern. It's very easy to just automatically fetch and then lose a life and look really stupid. Make sure to know what lands are in your deck and fetch carefully. Number five spot here, I've got one that's a little bit on the controversial side. Uh, a lot of people will play Polluted Delta in their Rug Delver decks where they're trying to bluff what they're playing. People will try to guess based on your fetch land what type of a deck you have. And if you're not fetching for basics, if you're only fetching for duels, you have that opportunity to bluff. Although... I personally have run into a little bit of trouble with it because it also signals that you don't have something like a taiga and that you're vulnerable to chokes. So be careful there. It's a nice way to try to get a psychological advantage, but it can backfire because you may be giving too much information about your deck to your opponent. 
or in the number four spot here, we've got fetch lands are the gift that just keep giving. Crucible of Worlds and Life from the Loam are two of the strongest combinations that you can play in Legacy and Vintage and Modern. The ability to play the land again and again and again just allows you to rip cards out of your deck, which I'll talk about deck thinning a little bit more, but it also gives you the advantage of a land that you can just bring back and use for other purposes while still getting the land advantage out of it. Raven's Crime has got to be one of my absolute favorite cards in modern. It's a wonderful attrition card that works really well with smallpox. Check it out. It combos great with the fetch lands. In the number three spot here, I've got Courser of crew fix. So this is a lot like the Sensei's Divining Top. You get a little bit less information, but it's very important to hold those fetch lands for later in the game so that you can shuffle away the things that you don't need and you have more access to your answers. Courser doubled in price once the fetch lands were announced, and it's not by accident. This combination is amazing. It also saves you the life because you're going to gain a life when the Fetch land comes into play, you're going to lose one, but then you're going to gain one when you get the land. It, it's a reason to keep those fetch lands until you've got that courser out so you don't get blown out by aggro decks. Deck thinning is a little bit of a controversial one. I really like the article that is mentioned here. It's Mathematics Onslaught Fetches by Garrett Johnson. His math is amazing and his conclusions are unfortunately bad. He says the deck thinning really doesn't matter. But in looking at his math very carefully, he's arguing that it's often 10 or 20 turns into a game before you get a full card advantage. But as you pull lands out of your deck, you're getting a 2 or 3% advantage each turn to draw that burn spell that you need, or that aggro spell, or that answer spell. When you multiply that over 5 or 10 turns and over... 50 or 100 games, this is several game wins that can be pulled out by thinning your stack. Definitely check out the article that is linked here. It's a great article with really good math, but look at the conclusions there. I strongly advocate for deck thinning, especially in aggro decks where you really need to pull that extra point or two of damage, pull that extra lightning bolt to pull it out. The number one spot here, I've got Brainstorm with fetch lands. I did a video a while back on the best one casting cost blue cards and Brainstorm was at the top of the list because with fetch lands you can really turn it into Ancestral Recall. You get to get rid of the two bad cards that you don't want and get yourself three cards off of that one card. It is just incredible. This combination is probably the most broken combination in Legacy and Vintage. It's one of the reasons that Brainstorm is restricted, and I'm slightly surprised that it's not banned in Legacy, although it would hurt my heart a lot to see it banned there. The, the card is so skill-intensive. Learning how to play Brainstorms with Fetches is definitely a high-skill play, and that's what I really like about fetch lands. Number one is you're giving life for these other advantages. And anytime you can use life as a resource, Dark Confidant, very close to my heart there, it really gives you a difficult situation or a difficult choice to make, and you've gotta be careful with that choice. Fetch lands just bring that skill level into the basic aspect of playing land in Magic. I'm so happy they've got them back in Standard and that they're supporting them in Modern. Side note, I'm going to be out and about doing pre-releases this weekend. I'm going to be over at Card Kingdom in Ballard on Saturday, so please stop by, say hi. And I'm going to be out at Phoenix Games in the evening on Sunday, so I'm doing a pair of pre-releases. Uh, another interesting announcement is that Card Kingdom is opening a new location called Mox Boarding House in Bellevue. So I'll be uh, out on the east side a little bit more often. Uh, playing some games out there, and whenever I find out about the uh, opening date, I will definitely let you guys know. I'm also super close to 5,000 subscribers. Please subscribe to the channel. I would greatly appreciate it. We're going to do some really cool pack openings and giveaways at 5,000 subscribers. I've got a video coming out this week talking about that 5,000 goal. Thank you to everybody who's out there on Patreon. I greatly appreciate your support of the channel. This has been Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech.